Hi and welcome to IT Chronicles. We're coming to you from the Gartner Data Centre show in Las Vegas. I'm Kirsty McGowan. I'm here with my co-host Charlie Betts. Kirsty. Morning, Charlie. And it's our pleasure to be chatting with Susanna Axelrod from Puppet this morning. How are you, Susanna? I'm fine, thank you. How are you doing? Good. Great. Susanna, it's so great to have you here. Oh, thank um, you. Puppet is, uh, in my mind, a very uh, leading vendor in the new Agile and DevOps space, uh, from, but from an infrastructure perspective. And we'd like to take this opportunity for you to speak to the mainstream of the inf um, uh, infrastructure and operations management community. Sure thing. I mean, these are folks who are still, they're using shell scripts, maybe they're even using graphical mm -hmm. user interface consoles, they're yes. logging directly into production systems and altering them. Mm -hmm. um, I think you've got a very different view on how infrastructure should be managed. <laughs> yes, we certainly do. Um, well, I, I wanted to just relay a quick anecdote where um, one of uh, an enterprise IT director walked up to the booth yesterday, and I was standing with one of our SEs, and he asked, uh, what don't I have to do if I adopt Puppet? What doesn't my team have to do? And Spencer, this wonderful SE, said, well, you don't have to manually configure uh, software or install anything. <laughs> and I thought that was a pretty funny response. I mean, it's, you know, it's sort of a, a leading edge exaggeration a little bit, but I mean, it's really like if you use Puppet effectively, it eliminates all that manual configuration work, the script work. So, and many of our customers are getting, you know, down that road, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would it, is it safe to say that with Puppet you define what you want, but exactly. not necessarily how? You define what you want the infrastructure to look like, yeah. what you want it to do. That's exactly right. And Puppet right. does a lot of the heavy lifting on the back end as to That's how. That's correct. Correct. Okay. So it's, um, you know, for that reason, it's not just useful for defining what you want in terms of uh, provisioning and initially configuring your servers, mm -hmm. but it's also useful for, uh, for maintaining the state that you want. So if you have long-lived servers um, and you know, issues such as compliance and security, you want to keep those configurations exactly as you specified in the first place. Or if you make changes, you want those to be controlled. Yeah, absolutely. I also would love to give Puppet a big, big shout out for the State of DevOps report. That has Thank been you. such a yeah. tremendous contribution to the industry. Absolutely. Um, the level of investigation and statistical rigor in it is mm -hmm. unparalleled. Of course, you know, as Nicole Forsgren, a lead investigator, PhD, mm -hmm. you know, statistics uh, wizard. Um, one of the things they discovered was that what a key uh, indicator um, of a high-performing IT organization is all the things in version control. Mm -hmm. And of yes. course, with Puppet, I mean, you know, it's pretty hard to put, you know, sometimes with configuring systems, we put the instructions in a Word document or we keep them in people's memories. Absolutely. Of, you that's, know, the, right? that's the worst part. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. Yep. 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 It's the checklist, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 And, and it's, it's on a file system somewhere. But I think the new trend is towards infrastructure as code. That's, That's absolutely right. Kind yep. of an interesting yeah. concept and maybe one that some of our audience hasn't heard of before. Sure, sure. Well, that's essentially what Puppet is and what it does. I mean, it allows you to treat uh, your infrastructure, to treat the configuration of that infrastructure just like you would any software code. Right. Mm -hmm. And that means that you can store it in version control, you can peer review it, mm -hmm. you can move it through, you know, from dev to test to prod. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, you, you have a lot more control um, and, you know, reusability efficiencies yeah. out of it right. uh, versus just, you know, a, a forest of scripts or checklists or what have you. Right, you can see what changed. Exactly, you know, exactly. Of like, well, so how, you know, how fast, sorry, sorry, no, Kelly. Please, no, so how no. fast do you see the uptake of this happening? Are people, yeah. you know, is it catching on quickly or is it, is it a slow? Slow uptake. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's catching on quickly. I think that it's interesting you mentioned version control because um, that is, uh, we spend a lot of time with our enterprise customers, um, especially on the ops side, introducing them to those concepts and really helping them understand how to use Git, how to move things through a pipeline. Um, but when they do and they, they get it, it is so helpful yes. to them and their businesses. Yep. And it really, you know, in terms of, of you know, building those, those software stacks they give to their app developers for test or for, they go from days to minutes to hours to, you know, to provisioning those. And it's really, um, you know, because they have it all stored, they have each role defined, and they can basically just roll out machines. Mm -hmm. And they're exactly what they need. Yeah. 
Yeah, we get past this issue of, but it works on my machine. <laughs> yeah. Why won't it oh, work in well, production? Yeah, that's right. Well. <laughs> well, the interesting thing also about infrastructure as code is that it can travel along with the rest of your code. So mm -hmm. a lot of our customers are using it in their continuous integration, continuous delivery pipelines. Mm -hmm. So you make a change. I mean, this is DevOps, right? Yeah. You make a change Absolutely. to yes. your server platform configuration, and you make a change to your application as well, and those travel together and change together. Mm -hmm. So you don't have that sort of um, you know, dysfunction where one changes but the other doesn't. Right, right. The way I described it, it used to be that we assumed that dev and QA and prod would be different environments and we mm -hmm. would try to just make them consistent yeah. where they had to be. And that yeah. never worked too well. No, no. Now we assume mm -hmm. that they're going to be the same. Yeah. And sure, there's some differences, and this is where the work mm -hmm. gets hard. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. your, your production environment is always yeah. going to look somewhat different. Yeah. Right, but if you right. start from the assumption that they should be the same, you know, then that's mm -hmm. a much I think, safer place to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it gives you that control so that you can actually make the changes that you need as you go through and not, yeah. you know, not just, uh, I mean, just deploy, you know, one thing that fails because the software changed or because... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what else has been new at, in, at Puppet lately? I heard you, you were talking about your reporting earlier. What's, you've made yeah, some changes sure. there. Yes, we have. Well, I think that uh, those of you who follow our Puppet Enterprise products know that we release very frequently. Yeah. So there's always something new happening. <laughs> um, so we, we really um, are, we gear up to really get um, new functionality out yeah. about every quarter. Mm -hmm. um, so the last quarterly release, it's funny because for a product manager, you're always thinking forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I have to think back to what we introduced <laughs> in October uh, rather than forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but we uh, introduced it around PuppetConf. Mm -hmm. And we had a few important highlights that we, that we talked about a lot on the main stage and in sessions. Uh, one was, um, I think, really important for, um, you know, before the session today, we were talking about policy. And so for um, security, and we, you know, we offer reporting basically yep. on your puppet runs. And so today, or in the previous versions, you could see when something changed, right? Yes. So you could yep. see when, um, uh, whether, you know, puppet, corrected something or made some change to a node or to the node's right. catalog, right? Mm -hmm. But you didn't understand the nature of that change mm -hmm. at all. Puppet yeah. didn't differentiate between a change that you made deliberately because mm -hmm. you deployed a change in your Puppet code or mm -hmm. a change that was made to correct something that was inadvertently changed mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. node. Or, mm -hmm. And so the, um, what we actually introduced is the ability to tell the difference. Right. So that um, a customer can say, okay, I know that those changes were things that we changed, so that's mm -hmm. okay, but wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Here's a corrective change that was made. Yeah. Where did that come from? Right. Exactly. And so for that you know, security aspect, you can see, well, maybe there was a breach. Yeah. Or maybe yeah. there was some, some issue I need to follow up on. And yeah. so we enable you then to drill into the nature of that change and really trace it back yeah. and fix whatever the underlying problem or see if there, you know, there might have been some bigger issue. So that was one thing. Yeah. Um, we also introduced, um, I, I think uh, some people have been, you know, if you've been watching us for a while, you see that um, over the past year we've introduced orchestration capabilities, yeah. greater uh -huh. orchestration capabilities yes. into Puppet. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, uh, you know, traditionally we've had more of a convergence model where, you know, we run every so often and bring those uh, catalogs up to the desired state. Right. And we've been investing much more in orchestration, which is, you know, make this change now. I want to deploy a change. Right, right. Um, so we've made, we made, introduced some changes to that to allow you to um, use a query language to much better sort of slice and dice the areas of your infrastructure where you want to deploy change. Right. So nodes that look like this or in that data center or, so it's a much more fine-tuned approach to change and to, to deploying those changes. And then uh, finally, again, thinking back to October, <laughs> um, we introduced uh, uh, some more functionality around containers. Mm -hmm. So for a while, we've been discussing uh, Project BlueShift, okay. which is kind of our catch-all name for the work that we've been doing around, um, you could call it next generation infrastructure, future infrastructure. And so one of the really cool things, so, so over the past several months, we've been actually um, uh, working more on things that have to do with managing the host that containers run on, which is also very important, or running Puppet itself in containers. Uh -huh. And with uh, the last PuppetConf, we, we stepped into the world of actually managing the containers themselves. So we introduced a container build uh, functionality where um, 
you know, you can actually specify and configure the container itself and then build it, you know, just like you would any other host. Yeah. And sure. yeah. That so like exciting times. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well thanks a lot for your time today. Oh, Susan. thank you. It's been great chatting with you. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you.